Good afternoon, welcome back. Today, another exciting day with the LS400. We're gonna be driving to Santa Barbara, which is pretty far. It's about, I think Waze said earlier, about 100 miles. So that should be another, another nice workout for the car. I really do want to change the oil, like, soon. Not because it has so many miles, but because it has a lot of months on it. You know, probably about nine, ten months at this point. And, you know, every six months is a good idea. Got to do the same thing with the Corvette. Uh, I'm just not sure when I'm going to do it. I may just take it to my dude, George, have him look the car over. Um, but I haven't decided yet. Let's see, in other news, I think I mentioned yesterday, or maybe I didn't. I don't remember. I don't know. But I talked to my insurance adjuster about the Kia. He's going to take a look at it on Tuesday. So the car is going to sit there basically for, it's been there since Monday. And uh, so eight days, you know, with what I can just assume with no action. I mean, maybe they tore it down, like took the bumper off just to kind of get in there and take a look. But, but no real work has been done. So I'm not sure when that car is going to be ready. I'm hoping maybe by the end of next week, but I'm thinking probably an additional week, uh, one to two weeks. So definitely missing the utility of that car. Uh, the good, good gas mileage, the uh, excellent headroom, and everything else I've mentioned in my videos. But hey, you know, like I said, the, uh, the LS has been serving me really, really well. It's just having to fill up three times in one week you know, at 70 something dollars a pop, you know, that, that kind of hurts. Uh, but at least the car is paid for and knock on wood, nothing, nothing else has needed fixing other than replacing all four tires and getting an alignment. But you know, that that's really not the car's fault whatsoever. Uh, really can't complain about the buttery smooth V8 power. I mean, it is just, it's just fantastic. You know, it, Really, at any speed, you can put your foot down, and and those uh, 290 angry Japanese horses run run like crazy. And especially with 231,000 miles, it's all the more impressive. So, really, really enjoying the car. It's just uh, it's beautiful, and it looks good too. Uh, so, what else? Yeah, I'll probably do a little update. You know, kind of gas mileage update once we get to Santa Barbara. I'm hoping I'll see maybe some other cars to check out, you know, like if there's a car lot I can walk past, it would be cool to kind of just browse at the window stickers and see what's going on. Um, hope you enjoy the thing I did yesterday at the Toyota dealership and then the couple of used car lots I saw. So I'm gonna try and get some more content like that going for you guys uh, very soon. Right now, kind of my focus is to just kind of take all my friends along for a ride, keep you updated with what's going on just trying to have something for you every day. Maybe you're uh, making breakfast and you need some white noise. You know, this video would be perfect for you. Uh, maybe you're, uh, you know, maybe you're getting dressed, brushing your teeth, whatever. Again, perfect video for you. Um, or maybe you just need to space out a little bit and listen to my boring voice. Again, perfect video. Um, but I'm truly honored and appreciative of all of you that have watched my videos and subscribed. Um, really helping me make a dream come true and uh, really appreciate your support, like from the bottom of my heart. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna keep making videos. And uh, you know, there just seems to be some car stuff every day. So uh, I'm excited to share all this stuff with you. And, uh, you know, like I said, even if we're just going to take a ride, you know, let's talk about the ride. It'll be fun. Uh, so probably be back in a little bit, maybe once I get to Santa Barbara or if I see something funny on the road. Um, right now, 20.8 miles per gallon on this tank. Filled up last night in Long Beach. So we've got 56 miles since refuel. So we'll see. I'm, I'm at just above a quarter tank right now. So we'll kind of see like where the gas gauge is sitting once I'm in Santa Barbara and then where is the gas gauge sitting once I get home tonight? That, that will be the question. I'm thinking probably a lot closer to empty. <laughs> Might as well fill up a fourth time, you know, that would be fun. 
Um, wow, it's a lot of money in gas. Anywho, folks, I will see you soon. All right, question, hive mind and friends. That car, Chevy Bolt. What do you think? What are your thoughts? My thought is it's a good deal, but it's a Chevy. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you get the Chevy problems, like an interior that was designed by someone that doesn't know anything about interiors. <laughs> they look good on the inside. You know, I, it's like one of those cars that I want to like, but I just can't. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was really like on the fence about getting a Volt with a, with a V, like Victor. I really wanted one of those. I thought that was kind of the perfect compromise between having an EV and a hybrid and all of that stuff. And, and for the, the number of miles that I, I cover in a day, that seemed to make the most sense, you know, covering like 60 miles electric and then having, you know, up to 400 miles of generator power. I just thought that was brilliant. And I, I actually rented one on Turo at, you know, a, a decent expense to myself. But I thought, you know, before I, I drop, you know, $20,000 on a used one of these, I want to make sure that it's, you know, it's going to work with my lifestyle. And, you know, that was the best money I ever spent was renting that car because I found that the seats were just not happening for a guy of my size, like impossible. It, it was pinching my shoulder blades because my, my back is just too wide. And, uh, I mean, I know like I should have a smaller back, but I don't. <laughs> so I, I thought it would be better to buy a car that fits. So that's what I did. And that's why I ended up with the Optima. Um, but you know, I, I also considered the Bolt with a B like boy and you know, that in terms of range would work for me most days. I think, I think those go like 200 and something miles. And especially for at the time, you know, the 2018, 2019 model year, I think the range was like 225, 250, something like that. And really, you know, that covers most days for me, like that would be just fine. But the reviews I read was that like the seats were even worse than the Volt and uh, the, the cushions were uncomfortable and I just thought, okay, I'm out. Like, that's just not going to work because comfort, you know, I think I've been in my car, uh, got at least 12 hours this week. You know, that, that's how many hours I've been in this seat and probably more than that. I'm just, that's my estimate. So it's really not worth it to have something that's excruciating to sit in. Uh, I, I had a, a show to do when I rented the, the Volt. I got there early and I was super duper tired. So I wanted to take a nap. And for me, you know, a good test of any car, especially when it's a rental is, can I sleep in it? You know, if I need to, if I want to take a quick power nap, you know? Um, and so I put the seat back and closed my eyes and I woke up and my, my hands and arms were asleep because of how the seat was pinching on my shoulders. And, uh, you know, the, the, the cushioning was like really thin and, and just not very pliable. So that was just a, that was a non-starter for me. You know, I didn't care, I didn't care how nice it drove. I didn't care what the gas mileage was. You know, it, that was just no good for me. And uh, the gas mileage was okay in the Volt if you can charge if you can't charge you're looking at about like i don't know 35 or something so i didn't find that like the efficiency was was that good also the wind noise was horrifically bad on the freeway you know if you're rolling with the brisk traffic speeds you're talking about some serious wind noise so uh, for me i didn't like that just again for the number of hours i'm driving i i want it to be as serene and comfortable as possible I mean, ultimately, I'd rather just have like an Equus, you know, but but I do need that carpool sticker and I do need some efficiency. Approaching uh, a level crossing. I don't know why it's a level crossing. Maybe somebody out there is from, from across the pond, you can tell me 
why you call it that. Um, so anyway, just, those are my thoughts on the Volt. Let me know your thoughts on the Bolt, if you've driven one, if you've been in one. I have yet to be in one. I've known people that own them or lease them, and uh, and they, you know, they all had good things to say about them. They're fun to drive, good value for the money, and all of that stuff. So, you know, I'm certainly a fan of the idea of the car. I just don't know if, as a larger gentleman, owning one would be so fun. Uh, but that's certainly like on my list of cars to consider uh, once once I'm done with my Kia. Uh, and that's why I ask because I, you know, I just can't, I can't get over how expensive cars are right now. And, and not just right now, but let's say a year and a half ago, everyone was saying, Oh, well, you know, you should get a Tesla. And I, again, I would love to get a Tesla, but I just can't drop 45 grand on a car right now. Like for a used model three, give me a break, dude. Like that's, that's some serious cash. Uh, especially if you don't have like a hefty down payment to come in with. And then you're buying something with a battery that has like an end date. I mean, of course, like all cars are disposable eventually, but you know, and everything has a life cycle, but these batteries, they degrade over time. So, so if you're not getting in, like when the car is fairly new, you know, you could be looking at some fairly diminished returns, especially if it's like a battery that's more expensive to service. Those of you that watch Hoovy's Garage and Rich Rebuilds, you know, probably saw his model, I think it was a Model S, like P85, and the battery bricked itself. And he sent it to Electrified Garage down in Florida, and they charged him like 5,500 bucks to basically put a Band-Aid on it and make it work for a, a little while longer. Um, and there was a lot of controversy over that repair. Although I was, you know, I, I think what EV Garage did was, uh, or Electrified Garage, I think that was a good fix actually, especially considering how much money the owner wanted to spend. So, you know, no hate from me on that. But ultimately the correct repair would just be to replace the battery. Anyway, let me know what you think. All right, it's nighttime. About 10.30 and uh, wrapping up in Santa Barbara. Really pretty up here. It's been a long time since I've been up this way and uh, what a treat. I didn't really do anything, but it's still really pretty. Um, <clears throat> car started up, no problem. Everything's good. I am noticing since I have the windows partially rolled down right now, there's a little bit of squeaking in the brakes. And I can't tell if that's the, the pads are worn down, like maybe I need to have those checked or maybe it's just, it's kind of cold and uh, yeah, it's 65 degrees, it's really humid. You know, you've got that like ocean humidity going on. So I'm wondering if maybe like, maybe that's why they're squeaking. I tried to get a little heat in them. Yeah, actually they're good now. I don't hear anything. Okay, well, never mind. Brakes are fine. Maybe, <laughs> you know, with as old as this car is and as long as I haven't been putting like punishing miles on it, I've been on the brakes hard this week. Um, I've been on the gas hard this week. Everything has been working hard this week, including me. Um, the only thing I'm seeing is how I'm going to have to drive this car probably for another week or two, you know, besides the brutal gas mileage is uh just you know the only thing that's like not ready for prime time are the headlights like it's just it's really hard to see very far in front of me just because the the lenses are so fogged over so i may i, I just need to get to an auto parts store and i haven't been able to quite make that happen this week so maybe tomorrow i i have a, a bit of a lighter day tomorrow and uh there's like really not much that I have to do. So tomorrow I think I'll, uh, at the very least, I think from uh, watch JR Go's video, he was using the uh, rain -X headlight restore. And I think you just kind of wipe the headlights and boom, you're back in business. So I may do that just as kind of like a temporary fix. 
and then later on uh, go with the turtle wax kit. Uh, but I just, I kind of just need like a quick fix right now. Something that I can just kind of just do in a quick moment. So if I do end up doing the rain X route, which I'm about 90% sure at this point I'm going to do, I'll definitely take you all along for the ride so you can see if that's, you know, a product that might suit your needs. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm, if it could just make my headlights 10% brighter even, I would be very grateful, like very grateful. Uh, the only other thing that that's kind of like an issue with this car at the moment would be, and this has been an issue that has been going on since I bought it, and that's the center caps on the wheels are kind of loose. They, uh, <clears throat> they just kind of pop in and there's kind of like a little ring that provides tension and you know, they're just not very tight, but you know, in 90,000 miles, they haven't fallen off. So it's not a big deal. They just kind of make some, you know, rattling and clanking noises as I drive down the road. But you know, this car is so well insulated that with the windows up, I never hear it. It's only at times like this when the window is, is cracked. It's just a really nice evening. And even though I was working outside the whole time, it's it's still nice to just breathe in this beautiful Santa Barbara air. Um, so in any case, uh, we're just a little over half a tank at this point. Um, 21.9 miles per gallon. How many miles since refill? 129 since refill. Um, two hours and 48 minutes of drive time. So we'll uh, kind of check in once I'm back in my neck of the woods. And uh, big shout out to anybody watching this. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll check in soon. Bye. All right, well, there you go. It's midnight. Made it where I need to be. 71 degrees. We averaged 22.4. I actually had it up to 22.8, but being on the street, kind of dropped down my miles per gallon. 228 miles since refuel, four hours and 20 minutes in the driver's seat. Got another 143 miles and we're a little under half a tank. So I would say, I would say the LS did really well today. And um, looks like I'll be buying gas really soon. So um, in any case, I really appreciate you uh, joining me on my adventures. And uh, tomorrow, I don't know what we'll do tomorrow, but we'll do something. So uh, be well out there and uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.